no meat, no cheese, no eggs, mayo, honey, milk, whey, gelatin, or anything that comes from an animal. The term veganism was coined in 1944, but veganism was first mentioned in 500 BC by Pythagoras, who promoted benevolence amongst all species. For a guy who knew so much about things that were right, it's odd that he promoted something that tasted so wrong. But today we are going to give vegan snacks a fair shot by casting animal products aside and asking, you tried it? You tried that. Veganism. I'm Nick Novak from the Palace. Chad Hancock. Just want to real quick applause for that uh, excellent right triangle pun there. That was <laughs> A plus material. Yeah, just want to make you, sure people you. didn't miss that. <laughs> Nick Agger. That was very acute of you. That's not a right triangle, is it? No. You just think I'm a cute guy. Yeah, I think you're very cute. You I did. think you're very. I'd like to isosceles isosceles your penis. <laughs> That's the only what? triangle. It's the only That's triangle terms I know. The old isosceles Dude. triangle when you uh... do the same thing on two sides. <laughs> yeah, it's two legs on one side and a dick on the other, <laughs> making the third cross section. And my head goes here. Well, there was a time when we were gonna. Try to make these episodes cleaner. <laughs> Let's have 12 seconds today. Not into the intro. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's up? You tried that. Dicks! Just in the background. <laughs> it's just an hour straight of us just like, dick, cock, penis, balls. <laughs> you tried that? It is It is hard sometimes um, we were talking about to hear people talking about um, cock and balls and stuff when their masks are on. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> they're constantly <laughs> muttering under their breath about cock and balls, and I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> so we, I was in a store, and there was a. I was asking a guy like for directions to find an item in a hardware store, and I thought he was kind of being like kind of jerkish in his response, but I don't think he was because I couldn't see what was probably like a kindly smile on his face. Uh, and it was just harder to read his um, mannerisms. Have you guys noticed that that being a problem now that everyone's wearing a mask that you have to talk to? Yeah, I, I, it is. It is tougher to read people's expressions. I mean, like I walk my dog every day, a couple times a day, and one of the things that I actually like about it is that seeing people smile and stuff. You know, when I, like they see my dog, usually like brings a smile to people's faces. Um, and now I just see like. A mask. But you you by yourself though bring a scowl to people's face. So is that helpful that you don't have to see that anymore? Oh right, right. So that's how cute the dog is. Is it is that he he overrides the huge frown that I would normally bring. And uh, <laughs> I I actually did have a guy a guy came up to me not too long ago and he wanted to pet my dog, but he wasn't wearing a mask. So I told him he wasn't allowed to. I was like, oh, put on a mask first. And he got like really mad and stormed off. <laughs> yeah, it's been tough when we're out with my family and they've got masks on. And I'm like, I love you to my son. And he says, I hate you. And I can't tell if he's smiling <laughs> or if uh, he just and he's like slowly sharpening a knife and waiting till I turn around. I'm like, oh, man, look at this guy, this joker over here. Uh, but no, I, yeah, it is difficult. I know like in the grocery store, like when I'm trying to like get around someone or like I'm apologizing now, we just kind of like stare at each other. And then, like one of us feels like just nods their head or something. I'll be like, you go ahead. But I'm all like muffled. And they're going, no, 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 you go ahead. I'm like, just move. <laughs> like, uh, Everybody sounds like Bane from the Batman movie. <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> When Corona is in ashes, you have my permission to take your mask off. <laughs> <laughs> when the, so dumb. <laughs> when the, do your guys' grocery stores have the thing where like they have the directional arrows where you're supposed to only go down one side of the aisle? Yeah, some I've seen that in a number of stores. Some have it and some don't. Um, but I, I do notice that it's barely followed. Um, and I, I don't right. think people are trying to not follow it. I think they just aren't paying attention. You know, like you're, you're at the corner, you're, there's an aisle and three steps in is the item you need. And right. you're like, well, should I walk all the way around like the following aisle and come back up this one or what should I do? 
that's my so the it was very early into this whole thing and i was at the store and no one was following it and i didn't even know there was there i don't look at the floor of the store when i'm walking around i just kind of check out the aisle so i'm like going on the <laughs> aisle and this worker is like we got arrows you know and I'm like what like i literally looked at him like what i don't know what it was arrows he just kept saying arrows and i'm like I, what are you talking about and then he points at the floor i'm like and i literally i was so irritated at that point i go whatever and i just kept walking I was like, <laughs> nobody in the store the wide open aisle i'm not infecting anyone by going part across. of the problem gagger yeah those uh those arrows really <laughs> bearing down on you <laughs> I, was I was just waiting that. for it i was just waiting uh, for it <laughs> we have to tell that story because it came up um i don't know so Chad and I went into a D and D store at some point when we were kids. It was like called what was it called? Games Games Workshop. Games Workshop. And so the, I don't know why we went in there. We were just killing time or something because I never really played any D. I don't know much about it. But didn't you? Didn't uh, your brother play a little bit? So yeah, you know, yeah. We we played. My brother and I both played a, a little bit of D and D during the same time we were going through a Magic the Gathering phase. It was like <laughs> it was pretty concurrent with that. So we go into the shop, and the guys are clearly trying to keep trying to sell this product, sell these games to us, and keep us in the store for apparently as long as humanly possible. Yeah. They get no customers all day except for us. <laughs> so they set us up with a game. And so my guys are attacking Chad's guys. The guy's telling this long story about how uh, my character's coming up over a hill and they're going to be firing these groups of arrows at Chad's characters. And so my first role was to see how many, like, how many arrows I fire. And then my next role was to see how many arrows continued to fly through the air. It was like six (laughs) rolls to see whether these arrows hit. And I was like, okay, so now the arrows are bearing down on these guys. I'm like, how are you... By time I by time it got to the end, I had like no fucking arrows because I had to continue to roll the same number repeatedly. <laughs> I'm like, is this what D and D is? <laughs> and then I had to like roll dice to see how many of my guys died from like the two arrows that actually made it or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we were just like, can we just roll ourselves out the store? Or... <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and so there were ten thousand people in Chad's army, so I had to kill all of them. With two arrows at a time, so we were there for six years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, awful. I will say, going back to masks quickly, just kind of tying it all together. To me, actually, the biggest problem is the underwear. Because, as we all know, underwear are the masks of the crotch. And so now I can't see like when people's dicks are smiling anymore. Right? So, <laughs> I mean, I've... I've actually kind of enjoyed the mask, but I've always been a big Jim Carrey fan. Wow. (laughs) Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Ready? (laughs) Smoking. (laughs) Golf. Wow. (laughs) Golf. Move on. Golf. (laughs) Let's talk about golf. It's hard to... uh, When you're on the golf course, it's definitely hard to hear people yelling for through their mask. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know why we're talking about golf, but Chad, uh, we said, what should we talk about? And Chad said golf. Golf. A sport I know he never has played. Or have you played golf? No, I've never done anything beyond a driving range or mini golf. I hate golf. I think it's stupid. Yeah. But mostly I just wanted to bring up golf as an excuse to, because to, to, I was thinking about the story the other day, that one of my favorite stories of all time. The reason I started thinking about that is, is because as we record this, um, my stepbrother uh, drove out from Chicago to Colorado uh, for like a rock climbing trip. And he met up with uh, my brother and they've been going on hikes and stuff together. So I've been getting like bombarded with pictures over the text message chain that I have with the two of them. It reminded me of one of my favorite stories, which is at my brother's bachelor party. So for my brother's bachelor party, it was me, him, my stepbrother, Jeff, and then one other of my brother's friends, So we went on some hikes north of San Francisco. There's like the Mere Woods area with like a bunch of tall redwoods and stuff like that. So we did did some hike through the redwood forest, just the four of us. 
and we're walking along and then all of a sudden my stepbrother is like, oh, I got to tell you guys this story. Before I get into the story, I want to acknowledge that this story sounds very made up, but uh, I like to think that it's true. So the story (laughs) was that a friend of his won a contest and the contest was that you get to participate in this like celebrity golf tournament. And the celebrity that uh, he got paired up with was Arnold Schwarzenegger. So as uh, this guy tells it, he shows up, there's like a sort of a party the night before, like a gathering. And they're all there, like, you know, drinking some cocktails and stuff. And there's like a couple celebrities around, but none of them sort of like as big as Arnold Schwarzenegger, like as far as fame. So Arnold shows up super late, comes walking in, and the entire room just like basically all the attention directly on him, right? Like, how could you not? And so he's required, I guess, to come over and, like, meet this guy the day before they play golf. So he goes over and, like, introduces himself. And um, my stepbrother's friend, like, wants to impress him, right? I don't remember my stepbrother's friend's name, but let's just say it was Bob. So Bob says to Arnold, like, he's trying to make him laugh. So he's like, oh, how you doing? And and Arnold's like, fine. And then uh, Arnold basically says the minimum high and then turns around to leave And he's like, uh, oh, hey, hey, uh, Arnold, before you go. And then Arnold looks at him and he goes like, will you be back? And like Arnold just kind of like just a complete look of disgust and hatred like falls over his face. He just like shakes his head and rolls his eyes and walks out. (laughs) So the next morning they show up at the golf game and the very first hole uh, they come walking up and Arnold's there. And he sets his uh, ball down on the tee. And then uh, he's kind of like lining up his shot. And he's been very cold to Bob the whole time, right? Like sort of like not acknowledging. And then Bob's like getting very, very nervous about like this whole situation. Like, oh, is he just like not going to talk to me all day? Does he hate me? What's going on? So right before he takes his shot, he's all lined up. Arnold turns to him and he says, hey, Bob. He's like, what? What is it? When's the last time you had a blow job? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Bob's just kind of like, oh, I don't know, man, like uh, two months ago. So Arnold swings the club way back and just cracks the ball like as far as humanly possible, completely straight, like an amazing shot. And then just la- lowers the club, turns to him and says, how did it taste? <laughs> <laughs> It's just like the perfect. I don't even care if it's not true. It's just the perfect like myth, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Myth, you know, <laughs> just like completely uh. own a golf ball and then own this putts. <laughs> I love that story. I like. I know the punchline's so coming, and I still. Love it. <laughs> it's so good. It's such a funny story. <laughs> How did it taste? <laughs> Oh, well, we need to find out how some of these things taste. Get snacks. Here. <laughs> When's the last time you had a vegan snack? <laughs> how did it taste? We rate them on a five-point scale. A love debt, like debt, indifferent to debt, dislike debt, or hate debt. Now, one of these is called a breakfast biscuit, so we're gonna have to. We got to start with that. So it should be eaten first. This is called the Goody Girl gluten-free breakfast biscuit, cinnamon brown sugar. Um, So all of these snacks on the package tout vegan. So it's not just like sort of an always uh, naturally vegan snack, but um, they do tout, they have the little heart that shows the veganness. And these are three really sizable, uh, like they're almost like a graham cracker kind of a color and smell. Um, they do smell very brown sugary. S- smell good. Mine, uh, not so sizable because they all broke apart in the flight out here. <laughs> Did they? Uh, <laughs> so the, can you still read the sayings? I have start today and we all dream. Mine just says dream because it's broken. So you have we all dream. Mine says smon. S-mon. <laughs> smon? Mine says how do I taste? <laughs> <laughs> Mine says smoking. <laughs> smoking <laughs> so what is do you think there is an overlap between vegan people who are vegan and smokers mm. is it, could there be any because that's i mean it's not against veganism but it seems like if that's your choice 
you're probably not a smoker. I bet you there are some. I bet you because some sometimes veganism is driven by like animal cruelty, not so much health. Right. I think it's possible. But aren't cigarettes made out of uh, pig assholes? Oh, no, wait, that's hot dogs. My bad. Right. <laughs> Got those confused. Hot dogs and cigarettes. Careful. That's why that barbecue tasted like shit when I came to your house all the time. <laughs> Eating <laughs> yeah. Marlboro's covered in ketchup. <laughs> okay, Geiger, you're going to lead us off. What do you think of the goody girl cinnamon brown sugar breakfast biscuit? Hold on, I have to shoo my cat who's trying to eat these biscuits. No, they're vegan. Wow, your cat's not vegan. No, my cat eats <laughs> probably pig assholes. I don't know what we feed her, <laughs> him, but... I actually read that um, vegan diets are deadly for cats. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because I, I read there, are, like, you can feed a dog a ve vegan diet. It's very tough, but you can do it. But there's some, uh, like, protein or something in animals that, like, cats can't get from any other source. Oh. So you can only put them on eight vegan diets. Is that right? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Fucking wow. I came loaded for bear today, baby. <laughs> wow. Uh, that was a math joke, too. You're impressed. You got me at least a little impressed. I could count the number of lives to keep left. I, I am very impressed. I am. <laughs> you got to have your math jokes. We got our triangles covered. We've got <laughs> eight minus one that I'm so, or nine minus one that I'm so <laughs> proud of. I just fucked it up. Um, anyway. I'm actually, these are not bad. They taste decent. They're not like, it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's a cinnamon graham cracker. It's not amazing. And the consistency is a little dry, but I've come to expect that from these kind of gluten-free and vegan stuff. So to me, this is pretty much the epitome of an indifferent to that. Although if I had to lean one way, I probably would lean closer to like that more than, than uh, dislike. They're, they're reasonably tasty. Um, but I will keep it at a, um, indifferent to that, but these are, these are not bad at all. If someone handed me these at a party, I'd be a little confused, but not like super bummed out. I, I, they're not bad. <laughs> hey, come to my party where I'm serving fucking breakfast biscuits. Vegan be 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 breakfast biscuits. I'd be confused because you are staunchly against befriending vegans. Yeah, I do. I, that's true. They're like, oh, I'm vegan. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm leaving. And I turn around and walk away. <laughs> so I'm so cool. I'd be confused because the only parties you like are the ones in my pants. That's right. Only in Chad's pants. I haven't been to a party since the last time you were in town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since I've been wearing that uh, crotch mask. Since you, since you fed me that old uh, human cigarette. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Smoking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what joke is... Um, I'm around you a lot, so I hear you make a lot of key party jokes. Like, the, you know, oh, I do make a lot of key party jokes. I don't know why. I'm like, oh, where's the bowl to put my keys? <laughs> I'm basically just trying to hook up with all of, every everybody's wife that I've ever met. That's all it is. It's like it starts out as a joke, and I dangle the keys, and they bring a bowl out. I'm like, oh, whoops. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just so like uh, someone you meet. It's just like, hi, this is my wife Susan. You're like. Oh, where's the bowl for my keys? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> the guy's like, uh, you're going down the wrong direction at the grocery store. I'm like, where's your wife and where's my keys? <laughs> what? Why are you yelling at me? <laughs> and he's like, what? What did you say? And you're like, my keys. <laughs> Geiger, remember that time you were in Games Workshop and they were like, okay, now roll the dice to see how many of your keys end up in the bowl? <laughs> Yeah. The bowl is at the bottom of the hill. Keys are bearing down. <laughs> you, you show up to a key party with just a bucket full of keys and try to dump them all in. Whoa, look at all the, the look at all the willing participants and just rolling it around. They're like, there's three people here. None of us have wives. Oh well, let's make do. <laughs> Go get married quick so I can fuck her. <laughs> I do. I do as well from the back. I just got a big bucket of keys and rattle them around. <laughs> See you at the honeymoon suite. Keep on. Like you, you're like the end that ending scene of the graduate, except you're banging on the glass with handfuls of keys. <laughs> <laughs> that everyone knows uh, their party's about to be fucked up is when they hear like jangling keys like come walking through and they're like, oh shit. <laughs> I have uh, confused so many janitors. They'll bring out this giant ring of keys. I'm like, this guy gets it. And he's like, I'm just opening the door. I don't know what are you talking about? It's come to the point where like a janitor comes around the corner and your pants are already on the floor. Oh, it's, it's a, a Pavlovian response. It's a, I, hear the, I hear the jingle and a zip flump right from there. So. <laughs> 
Right, who's rating right. this? <laughs> what did you, did you, wait, what did you officially I say? I gave it an indifferent to that, a high-level okay. indifferent. All right, okay. Jen. To me, the key to this snack is that... Uh, nice. <laughs> is that it has a pretty good flavor, actually. I'm pleasantly surprised here. I It is a little dry, um, but I think it has a decent flavor, and the aftertaste is all right. I would not necessarily have specifically guessed that these are vegan. Probably with some butter, they wouldn't be as dry. But... Uh, I do think they have an all right flavor, so I'm just going to barely slide them into a like that. You guys are right on. It's definitely in between a high and different and a low like. It's missing. It's clear that what makes these delicious is butter, and it's not there. Yeah. But they still do taste very good, and I agree with Chad. If no one told me they were vegan, um, I might not think that. Uh, so because of the surprise, I'm actually going to slide them up, and I've eaten quite a bit of it. I'm going to give it a like that, two likes, and an indifferent. And on a vegan episode, that is a strong, strong <laughs> number. So <laughs> we'll see pretty. if that holds. Um, let's get this uh, Bobo's oat bite out of the way. This Bobo thing is like a paperweight. This thing is so dense. It's like so. I've seen these Bobo's oat bites before, and some of them are are decent. Like, there's a peanut butter and jelly one, uh, but not all of them are vegan. This one is specifically vegan, and it's the lemon poppy seed flavor. And as Chad mentioned before the podcast, uh, it is a brick. It's so hard. I I don't understand this. Cons- I mean, I haven't bitten into it, but like... I mean, when before we were coming down, my wife was like, what is this? And she's just picking it up and dropping it on the counter. It's like making a thud. I like lemon poppy seed, though, so. What's the picture of a lady washing a cookie tray? I'm con- <laughs> It's kind of a strange I picture. Think I think those are oven mitts. I guess. Why is she touching the top of the hot she's, pan? They must be like magnetic oven mitts because <laughs> I don't understand how she's holding. Come on, Bobos. Commission better art. It's... Ugh. This wow. Is, it's very dry. It's very dry. <laughs> it's also very lemony. It's like eating a lemon rind. It's like got the bitter part of the lemon to me. Ugh. It's not, it is a little softer once you actually get into it than you'd think on the outside. But it's like dense. I guess, just because I'm soaking it in my saliva. Kind of like you know, back on the outside, you seem all rough and gruff. But when you get really into the inside, you're kind of a softy. Once I invite you to one of my key parties, <laughs> you see, I'm not such a bad guy. No, no, this guy invited me to his home to have sex with random strangers. <laughs> He's a pretty good guy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's all right. <laughs> okay, Chad, what do you think? You know, I actually think these have a good flavor. I like the lemon that's there, but this, this consistency is so bad. It's like hard to bite into. And then when you're biting it, it just feels like you're grinding a bunch of oats in your mouth. You know, like like somebody just fed you raw oats like a fucking horse and you just chewed it down. It's <laughs> what? It's what? really bad. <laughs> Horses eat oats, right? Just shoving raw oats into a horse's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they eat them on their own. <laughs> <laughs> Pin that horse down so I can feed him. What? <laughs> Shoving horses, oats is in the horse's mouth. All, aren't all horses just invalids that just like require to be tube fed by oats or something? <laughs> so I probably, based on consistency, I would be inclined to actually give this a hate that. But I think the flavor uh, is a good lemon flavor, redeems it a little bit. So this is going to get a pretty solid dislike that from me. I'm going to go a little higher. I, I agree the consistency is a huge mess. Um, I don't mind that, like, oat, oats being shoved in your mouth flavor. <laughs> That's a, a lot of these health bars. Channeling your inner horse. <laughs> a lot of them taste no, that way. <laughs> oh, did it taste? <laughs> um, um, oh, God. So... <laughs> I'm going to give it an indifferent to that. I think it's just, I could eat it, um, but I wouldn't go back for more. So, Geiger, who uh, whose side are you on here? Um, I'm definitely more on Chad's. In fact, I don't think this is close to indifferent. This, this doesn't taste good, fellas. I don't know what you're talking about with the decent flavor. It's got an okay lemon flavor. I'll give you that, but the aftertaste is bad. 
That's true. Um, and like I said, I I get more lemon rind than I get lemon. Um, so it's got a bitter taste to me. And the and, and the consistency is awful. Um, it's like eating. It's like having just sitting there. You ever sit there like with your mouth wide open? And a random stranger just walks up and shovels oats into it. That's what it <laughs> feels like. I'm, <laughs> I'm oh, yeah. I've been there. No, actually, instead of loose oats, it's like someone shoved a baseball made of oats into it. It's like so dense and it's like it's just not good. So um, this is a dislike. It's not a hate that it is a dislike that it's aggressively bland, except for the aftertaste is poor and the consistency sucks. So it's about as. I would teeter much closer to hate that than I would in different. This is this is not good. So pretty much the opposite, exact opposite of the uh, biscuits. It's got two dislikes and then a different. And only the vegan chocolate left uh, to compete. So we'll see after the segment how that goes. Now today's segment, um, it's going to be a little segment called uh, You Need That. And now that we're talking about <laughs> health... Um, vegan, some people do, uh, obviously, like Edgar said, choose veganism for animal treatment. Some, it's a healthy lifestyle. Uh, we're going to talk about some extreme feats of human uh, strength and ability. And you guys are going to, I'm going to name six of them. And you're going to tell me what accommodations are going to be needed for you to complete this feat of strength. Okay. <laughs> so these are things that you cannot complete currently. You cannot do these things in your current state. How do you know? <laughs> I know you damn well. <laughs> Is one of them crossing the street without help? <laughs> <laughs> one of them is filling a bowl of keys. <laughs> is one of them crossing the streams at a urinal trough? Because I can do that. <laughs> he can do that. <laughs> one of them is shoveling oats into a horse's mouth. Um, <laughs> and then shoving it off a half pipe. <laughs> so there's six things so the first they're going to get kind of increasingly more difficult you guys just each have to tell me what what needs to be added for you to be able to do this what's the minimum amount of assistance you will need right is it some kind mm -hmm. of a machine is it just somebody holding you up what is it all right or or what what difference could you make in the in the activities let's see as we go so the first one is a very hard activity it's called a two-finger push-up so you think of a one-arm push-up, except now all that's on the ground is your thumb and your forefinger. From one hand or both? From one hand. And then you have to do a push-up, mm -hmm. right? So what's the most added that you you think you could do? Could you actually do, um, obviously you can't do that, but do you think if you added just your extra fingers, could you do the one arm? What's your push-up ability? I cannot do a one-arm push-up, I know, because I have tried, and I'm pretty sure i can't even do a two finger two hand push up uh, <laughs> i think for me what would need to be added is i would need to be on the moon maybe <laughs> <laughs> just pushing straight up you just fly into the sky <laughs> <laughs> is this a push up <laughs> that's one small step for man <laughs> I'd probably just need hydraulic fingers, I think. Just put the two <laughs> fingers down and hit a button like a lowrider. You go, vroom, vroom, and just moves me up. I mean, I uh, I know I can't do a one-hand push-up. I think I can do one regular push-up, probably, with all full hands. I could do a couple of those. But but uh, one, a, a two-finger one, ooh, even with two hands, it'd be tough. So I would need, ooh, give me like a good, solid seven years of uh, strength and conditioning. <laughs> Exercise, <laughs> build up that hand till it's nice and meaty, um, and then uh, maybe, maybe I could do that. I, I actually do do a lot of push-ups, or at least used to when, I, like, when I had my exercise class that I went to pre-coronavirus. Uh, like, we would do a lot of push-ups, and the the ones that we would we'd do would be the hand release push-ups, where you have to go like all the way so that your chest is on the ground and take your hands off the mat, mm. and then push yourself back up those are very tough but i still that doesn't translate into like one handed right um gary you start this one how sure. to dunk a basketball hmm. you can't do it what assistance are you gonna need all these answers are just gonna be us on the moon i was, I was just about to say i need to go visit chad on the moon uh, <laughs> i mean i mean the assistance i will need is a smaller hoop like i get dunk on my i've dunked on hoops they're like 
seven foot hoops. <laughs> I can do I can do that. We, like well, those adjustable hoops in the driveway, I can manage that. That or I need to find a slam ball court and go flying like a madman off a trampoline. A trampoline, right? Yeah, and yeah. dunk. That that I can you pull could off probably. Dunk it into a bowl of keys. I could dunk. Yeah, I could. I've dunked several a key into an empty ball, uh, and then only to find out there's only my <laughs> the keys. The ball was empty. <laughs> Well, that's how you putting a, a key into an empty bowl <laughs> party is called dunking your key. <laughs> dunking your key. I, I run up. I, I, when the, as soon as I sense that it might be a key party, like someone at a party just sets out a bowl and they're about to put chips in it. And I just sprint up and in one big motion, like windmill my arm around and slam my keys in there. And then as they're about to pull the chips, they look up like, oh, key party. <laughs> Chad, what do you need to dunk? I, yeah, you know, I used to be really proud of myself because I could, like, on an NBA regulation height, you know, uh, hoop, I could jump up and, like, barely touch the bottom of the net. And I was very proud of myself for that. So that means I need, like, what, an extra two, three feet of vertical <laughs> leaps. To get up like above, that. yeah, probably. Yeah. Um. So definitely... Spring shoes. Spring <laughs> I was going to say, what's the, um, what is it, flubber or something? Flubber. <laughs> 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 you have to turn into the nutty professor and do some flubber? Yeah, I need some flubber. That's what I if, if you wore the mask from the mask, could you dunk? Is that Would that help? I haven't seen that movie oh, since yeah. the theaters. Does he get, what is what are the powers does he get? He, he just stretches his or? face a lot. And he turns into like a living cartoon almost. So you could probably like his legs would probably stretch way out. I think he wins NBA Finals MVP, too. <laughs> he, he was a last-minute addition to Space Jam. Michael Jordan was like, what? And he just fucking stuffed it right in his face and, it, and yelled, smoke in, and, like, jumped on top of him. All right. The next one. Chad, you're up first. Uh, this is to complete the human flag. Now, you once described a man on a bus doing something like this, and that is to, you have a bar... And you hold your arms out so that your body is completely horizontal. Sure. Yeah, that guy. on. Yeah, he was on the subway. He was doing it on the subway. <laughs> so is there anything short of you just lying like, you know, on a bench sideways that would help you do the human flag? <laughs> <laughs> I need I, I'm pretty sure I could do it underwater. Yeah. I feel one. like when I've been swimming, I like I'll go up to like, you know, the jet that shoots the water out in the pool. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I could put my hands up against it and, like, use the power of the water coming out. That is a massive jet in that pool. <laughs> <laughs> to, like, levit- <laughs> levitate my body. <laughs> Kids are swimming by and just being flung <laughs> into the diving board. <laughs> yeah, you- <laughs> you guys, you guys don't oh. swim in swimming pools that have, like, uh, crashed jet airlines in it that are still running? <laughs> fucking Tony Stark, fucking invent, invent your pool. <laughs> I think in order for me to become a human flag, I would need to go to a tattoo parlor and have them tattoo an American flag across my entire body. And then I'll just walk around naked as the human flag. I think that's <laughs> yes. much that's simpler and less cost and more cost effective than trying to build up uh, the ability to hang <laughs> ver- horizontally off a flagpole. Can I, like, make a Halloween costume that has, like, human legs coming off the side, and then it's, like, a black bodysuit? And so then it just, like, looks like I'm a human flag. So flags can hang down, though, right? So I really just have to hang off a flagpole, then. I can do that. (laughs) Yeah, it's not windy outside. And then pull up... (laughs) Can I just light myself on fire, and I'm like, now I'm burning the human flag. (laughs) <laughs> yes that's what that's called self-immolation is burning the human flag okay next one um is to run an ultra marathon and that is usually between they say 35 to 100 miles we'll call it a 50 mile race Ugh. obviously you can't so chad you're the closest to actually completing this because yes you have run further than the rest of us half marathons um, but a fifth, so you maybe actually have an even better idea on what 50 would feel like. Yeah. Right? Because it's multiple times more. So what do you think? Tell us from the perspective of having run 13, what 50 would sound like. Yeah. I mean, so that's uh, like four, oh, almost four times 
the half marathon. More math. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> math. So, ugh. I so there's a part of me that's like I I I like I have a self image where I'm like I feel like if I really like devoted myself and like tried hard like and worked at it like I could really 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 do it. But I know realistically my physique is just like that of a lumbering oaf, right? And like I don't have like a good running form or anything like that to the point where I do get like tired out. I think what would need to happen is at the end of that 50 miles, there would need to be Arnold just waiting there to tell me (laughs) to like insult me in some way. And that would give me the motivation to get there. So I could find out like, you know, I could show up at the finish line and he's just standing there like, remember eating isn't cheating or something like that. (laughs) That's an insult. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. I guess not. Just one of his famous quotes. I Was guess, he like um, eating out your wife at the time, <laughs> staring at you? Eating's <laughs> not cheating. <laughs> and he's just holding up my, dangling my car keys up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> you let this happen. He's holding her by her legs and look, she's a human flag. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be like your greatest dream to like have Arnold insult you with some like, you know, one liner or something, right? Like he, you know, like the like he would use in Commando or something. <laughs> it'd be pretty cool. Huh? Greatest dream of a stretch. <laughs> Best day of your life. I think it'd be better if he was making key party jokes. <laughs> a squared plus B squared equals key squared. <laughs> Geiger, to run 50 miles, yeah. would you need, what, a car? Shoot me on a fucking cannon, and then I'll just <laughs> wiggle my art legs in the air. I can't fucking run too much. Mo- I can't run a half a marathon. I can't run a quarter marathon. I need about 57 packets of birthday cake goo uh, to get through it. <laughs> I think we decided you haven't run a mile since you had to run the mile in gym class. Correct. <laughs> that is absolutely accurate. I mean, my thing with running is that it sucks so bad. It's just boring, I and it's painful. And I don't enjoy it. I now, if I played like I would sooner try to play in a like eight hour long basketball game where I'm just constantly running around than I would because uh, at least there's like an objective to 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 a game that I can trick my brain into realizing I'm exercising. Man, it would have to be like it would have to be something like uh, I'll get like a billion dollars when I'm done or something like some enormous like thing to motivate me just to keep me from stopping moving my legs. Um, would Arnold have to give you the billion? Uh, he, he had to insult me. He'd be like, oh, he took a billion dollars to get your lazy ass off the couch and just hands me a, a pile of cash. Oh, by the way, your wife left these keys at my place last night. Oh, no, Arnold. <laughs> How does she taste? Wait, why am I asking him? I, I mean, his voice. <laughs> All right, last one. Your wife told me that your marriage is now terminated. Something like that. <laughs> um, Yosemite Park. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know it, right? Didn't she say so? You, you were talking just recently about someone mispronouncing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Chrissy's ex boyfriend, yeah. Um, so, Yosemite. Uh, so, there's this the straight up mountain, El Capitan, that has been climbed. Right. And you have to do a, a solo, free solo climb. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh boy what's your strategy how far how in reality how far could you get up a, up a slope like that how big is it do you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> does that matter you're not gonna get more than two feet yeah. how big is it never tell me the odds <laughs> i need to do the math here all right i don't even think we get high enough up to die like we'd be so bad that we would... <laughs> I, I'm like, oh no, I fall down and and plop like onto my butt from the two feet I made it. Because <laughs> how do you free? It, it's without equipment, right? Yeah. So yes. I've been, I went to Yosemite a couple years ago. I saw El Capitan. That cliff is gigantic. I just Googled it. It's the cliff side itself is like 3,600 feet, um, like of just sheer cliff, right? So it's Ooh. like over half well over half a mile so start adding things you would need like first if you even had regular climbing equipment still no 
right? Mm-hmm. You still not. Well, I mean, up you can't thing. use it, right? That's it's a free solo climb. You can't use equipment. You right, but you have to, you're now adding more and more things until you get up the mountain, right? So right. climbing equipment, you can't get it. What's the, what are we going to have to add before you get up? <laughs> can I construct an elevator on the side of the mountain? <laughs> <laughs> a Ding, I hit the wrong floor. Fuck, I still can't do it. Jetpack. Get to the chopper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, climbing equipment and years of training, are much better shape. I don't know. I, there's no way I could do this. Um, flubber. Just a little bit of flubber. Oh, yeah, more flubber. That's more it. Flubber. <laughs> flubber is a really essential part of this. No, I mean, I, I think, that I like, I have no upper body strength for those kinds of things at all, right? Like, I've tried, like, climbing walls before, or, like, I was mentioning my stepbrother earlier. He's, like, super into, like, bouldering, right? Which is where you just try to go up, like, a maybe three or six foot high rock you with nothing you just put a mattress down on the ground in case you like fall off or whatever what that sounds fun you drag a mattress out to the boulder <laughs> <laughs> where are these boulders like out on hikes or whatever you know like in uh there's like a bunch of them in colorado like outside denver so you know you just go for like dragging your sealy posturpedic behind you just in case you find a boulder and then uh what the fuck yeah, yeah he's got a california king sleep number that he's just like <laughs> Tell your brother to just start watching Netflix or something like a regular person. <laughs> but uh, but like even that, right? Like he has trained his upper body for like years, right? Like he has these kind of like shoulders and he still has a bunch of injuries. Like he's torn shoulder muscles a bunch of times just doing that, let alone like Jeez. going up the side of El Capitan. So for me, it's flubber GTFO. Like that's the only <laughs> way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right let's eat the last chocolate we've got the final competitor it's enjoy life is the brand uh chocolate flavored confectionery bars rice milk so this is a chocolate bar with no uh, milk in it it's just rice milk and And on the picture on the front it says smooth and creamy with an arrow is that what you're gonna say no i want to make sure that you guys see on the back guys this thing is free from crustaceans just FYI. <laughs> no no shellfish either. No mustard. Why is mustard a problem? Why would there be mustard in a chocolate bar? <laughs> <laughs> They're just putting anything that's not... No onions. No Some onions. of these aren't... Like, what the fuck is casein and lupin? I, I, I have heard of casein before. Yeah, casein's like a dairy-ish type of thing, I think. Yeah, casein's something... I've heard of it. I want Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I know people can be allergic to it. So this is rice milk. It smells very dark chocolatey. It does. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does smell chocolatey, at least, though. It doesn't smell like um, like a crab or a lobster, which is good. No. Oh, there's no crustaceans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I disagree. I smell yeah. I smell a little bit of lobster there. Okay. Yeah. You know. mm-hmm. Oh, wait. That's just my pet lobster. Get the fuck out of here. Chalk lobster. <laughs> wait. Neither guy, neither one of you guys is allergic to, to uh, shellfish, right? No. Oh, there's none in here. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> I am deathly allergic to mustard. <laughs> I'm on a no mustard diet. This is interesting because it's it has the consistency of chocolate. It it feels like you are biting chocolate. Like if I had lost my sense of taste, I could tell you this was chocolate. But there's just something missing. I gotta go first. This is tough. Um, man, I feel like this is right. It's not bad. It really isn't that bad. Hmm. Uh, but if I didn't. I think it's being hurt by the fact that I love chocolate so much. Like I could enjoy that breakfast biscuit earlier because graham crackers are just okay to me. And it tasted like a pretty good, decent version of one. And this is a much worse version of something I really like. But if for some reason I was to go vegan, I think I would probably, I could come to like these and eat more of them. I could see you could like put it on like a s'more or something. And it would be tasty. But because the flavor is not quite there, I'm just going to have to give it an indifferent to that. But I'm very curious to what you guys think. Geiger? Now remind me again. I know, Chad, you don't like dark chocolate, right? Mm-hmm. But you also don't, right, Novak? I don't like it nearly as much as milk. But there are, there are candies that I do enjoy that are dark chocolate. Okay. So I don't hate it. 
I was just wondering if that was impact. So I like dark chocolate. I mean, chocolate those dark a lot. chocolate raspberries we tried the other week were pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Those were dark chocolate. I like dark chocolate a lot. And for that reason, I actually think this is pretty good. It's not, um, you know, the world's best chocolate, but again, it's missing a lot of the ingredients like mustard and shellfish that go into any good chocolate. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, um, it's not like chalky or anything like that. And it's uh, like, so the consistency is pretty chocolatey or like a, a, like a chocolate bar would be. And I don't think it tastes bad. I, I like dark chocolate. It's a little bitter, but I don't mind. It's not the best chocolate bar in the world. It's obviously just plain old chocolate. But like if you were vegan and you needed to throw this in a s'more or if you just needed a something sweet, I think this would be something I would buy uh, all the time if this was uh, my proclivity. So I would uh, I'll give this a mild like that. I think it's not bad. Whew. All right. We got some drama. That's good. So a like will put us in a tie. Yeah. A love will win it for this and an indifferent or lower. And the breakfast biscuit is going to take home the win. So, Chad, what do you think? No, we got we got a chocolate snob over here, son. I'm curious. This thing is very interesting. I think the consistency is actually really spot on. And as you continue to chew it more in your mouth, it it does have sort of like a very creamy uh, consistency that develops there. Uh, that's pretty good. My main problem is that I cannot dip it in hot butter or spread it on a hot dog because it doesn't have lobster or mustard in it. Uh, so that's a really <laughs> knocking it down. Um, it just kind of tastes like not that much different than like a Hershey's special dark to me, really. Like I, I don't notice that much difference from other kind of like low to medium quality dark chocolate bars. So that isn't going to be enough to bring it up to a like that for me uh it's it's fine it would do in a pinch it's not great so it is going to get an indifferent to that for me so when it comes to the winner this week i think there's only one thing that we can all say biscuit (laughs) (laughs) so the the breakfast biscuit has won I do think we all agree, though, that if you are vegan and you haven't found a chocolate you like, that you might actually enjoy this Enjoy Life uh, chocolate bar with yeah. rice milk. So, Geiger, where can all of our listeners, vegan or otherwise, contact us? If you'd like to enjoy life a little bit more, uh, you can come over to my house on Friday. I've got a big bowl and put your keys in. Uh, <laughs> You got to bring a partner. It's only fair. Um, now, if you'd like to tell us what you think about these snacks, if you are vegan and you have a take on maybe better snacks that you found or like your opinions of these, uh, obviously be, we'd be really curious about that. If you would like to tell us uh, the occupations of your fathers, or in other words, who is your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> you can uh, reach out to us at you, you try that at gmail.com. Uh, we are on Facebook with a, you tried that group. We're on Twitter, hashtag you tried that or on Instagram. And we're also on YouTube and other places where you listen to podcasts. Uh, obviously we, we love that you listen. Um, if you could drop us a, a like or a review or, uh, send us a question from the mailbag, anything like that, that'd be great. All right. So how often would you guys say you do human flag generally over the course of like a week? That we do human flag. I have I have developed a taste right. for human flag lately. <laughs> it sounds like we're like hooking up with a superhero named the Human Flag. Yes, yeah. like, oh, is that what it was? Okay. Did you guys invite Human Flag to your key party? Is that we uh, sure did? Like it was just some guy with a, in like a low rent Captain America costume with his dick hanging out. <laughs> He just attacks everyone. He, he is, always needs to be a pole nearby, and then he just like swings circles around and kicking them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very limited use of superhero. I'm pretty sure Human Flag was one of the characters in my imaginary tetherball league back in the day with that ability. <laughs> just owned on the tetherball court. <laughs> now I did. I did skip one one of the things for time earlier. Yeah. And it was uh, do it was doing. We had talked about something like this before, but it was a push up record. <laughs> we talked about the pull up record, uh, but this some guy did ten thousand five hundred consecutive push ups. Why? Uh, 
<laughs> and who had to sit there and count? Human flag. Human f- <laughs> in the corner, hanging off the pole. Two, three. He, he did. He did them in the game's workshop. So it was the employee. Like was just had nothing better to do. Just counted them all day. Like, please don't leave the store. I'll keep counting your push-ups. How many consecutive do you guys actually think you could pull off? Pull-ups? No, push-ups. Oh, oh, push-ups. Pull-ups. I was like half. Um, <laughs> ah, push-up. Ah, uh, pull-up. Right now, regular push-up, like regular hands push-up, right? Not the two knuckles or... Yeah, you have to do regular hands push-up and you can't stop. Like, you'd have to go to regular pace and as soon as you, like, stop to rest or something, your number's done. Man, I would consider it a victory if I got five knocked out. But that seems... <laughs> I'm not in shape. I'm That's not strong. That's not a victory of any kind. What? Any <laughs> How many do you think you can do? Like, 21 or something? Yeah, I could probably do like 30 or something. Not five. You yeah. could do more than five. You think I could do more than five? <laughs> yeah, I believe in you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> you're my you're my El Capitan. You could do oh, wait. Five. I thought you meant with you sitting on my back, I could do five. That's why, that's why I said five. <laughs> right. right. I'm doing a two-finger push-up on you while you're doing <laughs> How many can you do with me sitting on your face? Let's find out. Ooh. Oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh. <laughs> How does that work when he's doing a push-up? Even- <laughs> <laughs> You're velcroed around my face. Oh, it'd actually be easier. Your ass wraps around completely. Yeah, I've around got a face. really stretchy and flexible ass. I got the Mister Fantastic of asses. <laughs> Fucking manta ray ass over here, just enveloping my face. <laughs> you rub flubber all over your ass, and now. That just got aggressive. You put the mask from the mask just on your ass. It's like <laughs> green and flailing around. These farts are smoking. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, five. I, I stand by five. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, that's okay. Well, let's end it there. <laughs> We've got big news, though. And that uh, next episode, the next two episodes, you will want to tune in because we have got the tournament to beat all tournaments. Oh. It's the Kit Kat tournament with how many flavors do we got? 20? 20. Kit Kat Party Box. 20 flavor tournament. So make sure that... So it's been in the works for... Like, <laughs> since when? Like February or something? Yeah. <laughs> yes, a long time. And it's finally here. So make sure you tune in next week to hear all about that but uh, we'll be back next time we'll be trying 20 Kit Kat bars (laughs) (laughs) how did it taste smoking (laughs) (laughs) Uh. somebody stop me